Well, someone just called me and stopped the recording, but they hung up. That's okay. Because I am almost done with the other shin. Beaming high frequency sound waves, they will create levitation. The higher the frequency, the higher the power and the energy, so you can lift huge things up and move it around as you want. Ice cream cones in your hands. Boy, those two schoolboys made my day. <laughs> there you go. What I find interesting is that average three centimeters, which equates to 10 gigahertz. So when we reverse engineer this, some of the laboratories that work on, on laser technology, we can do some remarkable experiments, people. We'll change the world. We'll use these stones and we're going to discover new energies. And we can, any volunteers, we can put you in front there, set it up, and see what happens if we, if we phase you out or if you're still there. <laughs> Duh. 10 gigahertz. Duh. So, what do we learn from all okay. of this? If we don't learn something from this information, it's completely wasted on us. And uh, I believe we're going to have a break now. Is, it, is that true? We're going to have a break. Here we go. So, uh, I was going to have a 10 minute break, but mostly for your sanity, I'm used to this. So, I believe that we're reaching the conclusion of a prophecy. All the ancient cultures have these great, amazing prophecies that last thousands and thousands of years. And they, they say that the end days will be as the first days. Did you know that in 1980, 80, in the mid 80s, Four of the North American uh, native tribes came to South Africa to meet with Greta Mutwa and some of the African shaman because they believed that the new age will rise out of South Africa. It was quite amazing. And, uh, and they had all these ceremonies at, at these sacred sites and so forth. So the end days will be as the first days. Well, if humanity arose out of South Africa, then it should restart there again. And it makes me quite curious to see what's there. going on in South Africa at the moment. It's really <sighs> well, I seem to be bind these together. For some reason, but um, we're rediscovering free energy. We're discovering the sound two more. of energy. We just need to realize how to use it. Figure out how to use all these ancient stone circles that give us insane amounts of free energy every second of the day. We just don't know how to use it. We're crossing the galactic plane. It's a rise and fall of civilization. <coughs> concluding these giant, as Plato called it, the great year, um, and uh, we're exposed to frequencies and energies that we have probably haven't experienced in the last 26,000 years. So no wonder we're going through... See, you know, this is just, I guess, going crazy. They, I didn't feel the drive to do it until the day before. Maybe I was going to discover uh, something else of our, of our galaxy. before and I am. Um, exploding your consciousness <laughs> Did it. I had plenty of time to think about what I wanted to do, what I did not want to do. Take my time, get the things I need. I'm just one person. I'm not superhuman. So as our junk DNA gets activated, it creates a feedback mechanism and we start to think higher thoughts and our consciousness gets grows quicker and quicker. So now it's a beautiful thing, this people. And it's all connected to these crazy people and you know, 280,000 years ago building stone circles in South Africa. They created us and allowed us to get to this point where we can contemplate our own existence and our own Now I'm humanness. up here putting we how we fit this together. This great, I got crazy the thighs done we and I got the, morphogenic field and realize the lower the legs done. Is the morphogenic the, is the substance of the morphogenic field and, and plays a very important role in, you know, spooky action out of this that scientists are still trying to get wrap their heads around. How does this all work? And this is where I realize that if we don't learn something from this ancient civilization and apply it today, it's going to be completely wasted. So... I realize that these people live for long, extended periods of time without money. And uh, it was Kerry Cassidy, when she first came to visit me three years ago, she suggested to me, you know what, you should start a political party. Because when you start sharing this information, it's not going to go down well. And you need to create a platform of credibility and protection. So I did that. 
And the Ubuntu Liberation Movement has now been registered as a fully-fledged political party in South Africa, and I'm going to be running for president next year. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that is a, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. But it's true. And I just realized, hey, we're running, yeah. And then somebody said, so it mean, does it mean you're running for president? I have to, like, do a double take. Oh, shit, yeah. I guess it means that, okay. yeah. Okay. We're just trying to cause trouble. We're wow. just trying to inject the virus into the organism. But okay. it has some really spectacular side effects. <laughs> Get the knees. So we are all born on this beautiful planet. So we're all born free. And yet, we cannot move around. Yet. We cannot live where we choose to. We have to follow rules and laws that we didn't agree to when we were born. One thigh, another thigh. To earn this thing called money. We didn't agree to that either when we were born. Get the shins. We to be given a number and be treated like a corporation. We now I gotta connect them together. Not numbers of infinite soul and flesh and so blood. I'm gonna have to figure this one out. And yet that's not how we've been treated. I'm probably gonna have to punch some holes into some steel. On humanity are endless. I'll figure that one out the in a moment. Because I still got some other parts to work on too. I'll be back. Us. 